A long-awaited report into the origins of the probe into Russian interference in the 2016 election has found no evidence of a political conspiracy against the president. But the Justice Department's inspector general criticized the FBI's handling of wiretap applications used in the early stages of the investigation. Our William Brangham was at the Department of Justice today. He's been looking into this 400-plus pages of the report, and he joins me now. William, you have the report right next to you. Tell us, first of all, the headlines from this. The headline, as you touched on, is that the inspector general found that there was no political bias in the origins of the Russia report. As we have been reporting for years now, President Trump has constantly said this was a witch hunt, that bad cops in the FBI ginned up this investigation illegally to put him in jeopardy. And this report quite clearly says that that's not true. I'd like to read you this one key quote from the report. It says, quote, we did not find documentary or testimonial evidence that political bias or improper motivation influenced the decisions to open four individual investigations. So they're saying also that there was no role played by the infamous Steele dossier in the beginning of this uh, investigation. And it also says that the FBI, contrary to the president's assertions, did not spy on his campaign. Let's listen today. Um, the FBI director, Christopher Wray, came out after this report was released. Here's what he had to say. I think uh, it's important that the inspector general found that in this particular instance, the investigation was opened with appropriate predication and authorization. The inspector general did find uh, a number of instances where employees uh, either failed to follow our policies, neglected to exercise appropriate diligence, or in some other way fell short of the standard of conduct and performance that we and that I as director expect of all of our employees. So while you can read part of this report as a rebuttal of the president's theories all along, it certainly seemed like his mind was not changed by this. The president also, after the report came out today, had this to say about the investigation. They fabricated evidence and they lied to the courts and they did all sorts of things to have it go their way. And this was something that uh, we can never allow ha to happen again. The report actually, and especially when you look into it and the details of the report, are far worse than anything I would have even imagined. This was an overthrow of government. This was an attempted overthrow, and a lot of people were in on it, and they got caught. So, William, the president is saying that there's evidence here of bad behavior by the FBI. Is that what's in this report? That's right. I mean, the president is right in that regard. The, the other headline really coming out of this report is that the inspector general found a lot of what he argues were serious mistakes made by FBI agents after the investigation was launched, specifically looking at the, the FISA warrant that they used against uh, one Trump campaign aide named Carter Page. Um, the, the inspector general said that there were omissions and errors and embellishments in these documents. The, the, the FISA warrant, if you remember, all of this is if you want to open a foreign intelligence investigation into a into a person you have to present this court with a warrant and the inspector general says that in the FBI's case the warrants that they put forward left evidence out that didn't bolster their case they looked over contradictory information and basically did not provide truly scrupulously factual warrants um, this is another quote from the report today specifically about this criticism quote that so many basic and fundamental errors were made by three separate hand-picked teams on one of the most sensitive FBI investigations raised significant questions regarding the FBI's chain of commands, management, and supervision of the FISA process. In fact, today in this report, the Inspector General announced that the FBI will now be conducting an audit of how they undergo these FISA warrants going forward. So um, this report is from the Inspector General at the Department of Justice. The man who heads the Department of Justice, the Attorney General, William Barr, uh, put out a statement that was critical of this, which is uh, interesting. It is. Uh, interesting is a nice way to put it. It's a very, very divergent reaction going on here. As you remember, Attorney General Barr has long said he thought spying did occur against the Trump campaign. He has been 
uh, publicly suspicious of the origins of the Russia probe. Again, this report seems to have changed his mind not one bit. Here's a statement he said today. The Inspector General's report now makes clear that the FBI launched an intrusive investigation of a U.S. presidential campaign on the thinnest of suspicions that, in my view, were insufficient to justify the steps taken. It is also clear that from its inception, the evidence produced by the investigation was consistently exculpatory. Again, this is just a very striking reaction. This is the attorney general taking direct aim at his own inspector general and saying that in some sense his findings documented in this huge report are not to be believed. But in so doing, he's completely uh, in alliance with the president's exactly. uh, view on this. So finally, William, we know this is not the end of this. There are sti still several more shoes to drop. Tell us about that. Yes, yeah, so on Wednesday, the inspector general, uh, Horowitz, who wrote this report, he will be testifying before the Senate on Wednesday. There is also a second, broader investigation going on. Attorney General William Barr tasked uh, Connecticut Assistant U.S. Attorney John Durham to lead a wider investigation, one that's now become a criminal investigation, also looking in the origins of the Russia investigation, how that went forward, and what role foreign countries might have played in that. So Durham is undertaking this much broader investigation. The president seems to be banking a lot on what Durham will find. And in fact, Durham made the striking uh, statement today where he said this, based on the evidence collected to date, and while our investigation is ongoing, last month we advised the Inspector General that we do not agree with some of the report's conclusions as to predication and how the FBI case was opened. Again, it's just a very striking point where a U.S. attorney, who theoretically is, is um, uh, underneath the Inspector General, is, seems to be openly criticizing the Inspector General. So you have the Attorney General uh, with a comment. You have uh, this, uh, the other prosecutor, in effect, uh, making his own reaction, as well as the President. William Brangham, thank you very much. You're welcome. And now for more on the Inspector General's report, I am joined by John Carlin. He served as Assistant Attorney General for the Justice Department's National Security Division from 2014 to 2016. And he was also Robert Mueller's Chief of Staff when Mueller was Director of the FBI. And John Carlin joins me now from Phoenix, Arizona. So, John, I just want to say at the outset that your name is mentioned in this 400-plus page report uh, in two footnotes. Uh, we've looked at them both. They're tangential references, so we're not going to go into that detail. I, I do want to get, though, to the meat of this. What is your principal takeaway from it? Well, Judy, after two years, a million documents, over, what, 50, 70 uh, interviews by an independent inspector general, you have a conclusion that the FBI appropriately followed its procedures in opening the Russia investigation. They followed the rules of the Justice Department and the FBI. And because they followed those rules, we had an investigation that led to the unpacking and discovery of an unprecedented Russian intelligence conspiracy, which cost tens of millions of dollars, included computer hacking, leaked documents, exploitation of social media campaigns, and has led to 30 successful uh, indictments, in some cases convictions, of individuals for criminal misconduct. But you also had, as uh, William Brangham just laid out, description of errors made along the way by individuals in the FBI and others who were uh, working on this investigation. No, that's right and should be taken seriously. But first to distinguish, what the inspector general found was that the investigation itself, the broad uh, Ru Russia investigation, was appropriately opened under FBI and Department of Justice procedures. After it was opened, the inspector general details mistakes uh, that were made in the application process regarding the investigation of one of the individuals part of that uh, broader investigation, and that those mistakes linked to the obtaining one application um, that was then renewed for wiretap, and that's regarding Carter Page. We should definitely, and I think the FBI director, Christopher Ray, struck exactly the appropriate note in saying that any, any type of mistake or misconduct in, in obtaining a wiretap under the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court 
is serious. It should be looked at for process improvements so that that does not occur again. It doesn't change the fundamental finding, though, that that occurred after this investigation right. was launched and opened. John Carlin, how do you account for the reaction of the Attorney General, who clearly has problems with the thrust of this report? Look, it's, it's, uh, he, of course, is entitled to his own opinion, but his opinion is not the rules under which the then assistant director of the counterintelligence division, Bill Priestup, was operating when he opened the investigation. And uh, in some respects, good thing it wasn't, at least the way I'm interpreting the remarks, because if we had Attorney General Barr's opinion instead of the rules and procedures of the FBI, it seems like we would never have found out and held accountable numerous Russian agents for their attempts to interfere in the 2016 campaign. I hope he applies a different standard when we're looking to determine foreign interference coming up in our 2020 election. And it sends an unfortunate message to the men and women of the FBI and the Department of Justice, thousands of career agents and prosecutors who day to day are dedicated to protecting us from foreign threats against our nation, that their leader, the top official of the Justice Department, in no way recognizes what they did right. John Carlin, former Justice Department official, thank you. Thank you.